today's video, I'm going to show you an easy way to get cinematic color grades done in DaVinci Resolve using the Dehancer plugin. Dehancer is a powerful film emulation tool that allows you to achieve dynamic film looks using tried and tested popular film stocks. All of the footage you're going to see in this video has been graded using Dehancer. Check out the video description for the promo code. That'll save you 10% off your purchase if you choose to use the software. Let me show you how it's used and what you're able to achieve in a very short space of time. This is my personal workflow I've developed within the tool. I found it to be very effective, but I do encourage you to experiment and find a workflow that best suits your needs. I start off by adding three nodes to the footage I'm working on. The first is used for primary corrections such as white balance and exposure. The second node is where I add the Dehancer plugin and the final node is for me to do any black point correction or further sharpening. If the footage requires noise reduction, it's recommended to perform it prior to the grading stage. Then, render your clip with an HQ codec like ProRes or DNxHR and use the clip as a new source. What this is going to do is allow for smoother preview playback. Now when I'm looking at my footage, the first thing I'm going to do is select the hero frame. Once I've chosen that frame, I'm going to make sure that my input source lines up with the camera I've used. A lot of the sample footage I've used in this video was shot on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and so I've selected that as my camera as you can see here. The next thing for me would be to remove the film grain as I find it slightly distracting when I'm trying to color grade my image. From here I'm going to come into the Film Developer tool. Here I'm going to boost the contrast to a pleasing level. This works just like a normal contrast slider. I'm also going to shift the color boost parameter to give a value that gives me a good amount of color in the image. This works in the same way a saturation slider would. However, it does so in an intelligent manner, ensuring that all the colors remain inside the color gamut, so you don't experience any clipping. By adjusting the contrast boost and color boost parameter, you move away from the flat looking image and start getting a better feel for what your film might end up looking like after being fully developed. In this tool, I'll now also alter the gamma correction parameter. This parameter allows you to shift your midtones either towards the highlights or the shadows. The final parameter here is that of color separation. When the value here is reduced, the saturation of the most intense colors are reduced first, while the medium and low saturation colors remain almost unaffected. I'd recommend leaving this at or near to 100 as it gives your image deep and rich colors. This is the point in time where I might come back to my first node and do my primary corrections such as white balance and exposure if that's necessary. You also have the option to make these types of corrections with Dehancer using the input tool. Here you can make adjustments under the exposure compensation, temperature compensation and tint compensation parameters. These parameters will behave exactly as expected and will adjust the exposure, the warmth or coolness of the image and introduce magenta or green tones. It can be argued that this should be the very first step in your process, but I like to do it after adding the contrast and saturation in the Film Developer tool, so that I'm not correcting off of a very flat image. You also have the option to enable the defringe parameter. This will help address any potential chromatic aberration that could happen in your footage. If necessary, at this point I'll also go back into the Film Developer tool and tweak the contrast boost and gamma correction parameters to get the desired look out of my image. Let's head over to the film tool and this is where the fun really begins. Under the profile drop down you've got 63 film stocks you're able to choose from. Having done some groundwork in the film developer tool where you've boosted the contrast and the color as well as done some gamma correction, you're able to see the true color of the film stocks you're browsing. Let me show you that in action. Once we've selected a film stock from the profile drop down, let's scroll back to the profile developer tool and disable the changes we've made here. You can now see how we end up having a flat and washed out image and without having made these initial adjustments, it would have been very difficult to see the true character of the different film stocks available. Once you've settled on your film, you have the option to manipulate the look of that using the push and pull parameter. This parameter can have an effect on the overall color and contrast of your film as well as the ability to open blocked out shadows or protect blown out highlights. I'd recommend playing around with this parameter until you have the desired effect and in some cases it might even just be best to leave it set to zero. Next up I'd recommend opening the parade section of your scopes and heading over to the expand tool in the Dehancer interface. Here you can manipulate your black and white point. This will impact the amount of contrast your image has. The last parameter in the expand tool is that of the color mode option. This will be useful if you encounter unwanted color shift or oversaturation. In the luma mode, expand affects only the luminance component of an image, but does not affect its color. So the changes in contrast have no effect on the saturation. Now at any point you can go back into any of the parameters that you've already altered and adjust them again in order to create your desired look. From here I would move to the print tool. 
From the profile drop down, you can select from five paper choices. Each of these have a unique characteristic that will add to your film look. When selecting the Kodak 2383 print film or Fujifilm 3513 print film, you have the ability to manipulate the parameters within the print tool. Target white will adjust the color temperature of your image, exposure will do exactly what you expect it to and adjust the exposure. Tonal contrast will affect the contrast of your image. Color density will affect the saturation of your image in a very specific way. It affects aesthetically significant colors to a higher degree than what a regular saturation adjustment would. Your final parameter here is saturation and would behave as expected. The analog range limiter option allows you to normalize your brightness values from the range within 0 and 100. Effectively, this will eliminate any clipping in your image beyond the 0 and 100 IRE range, creating a softer image and improve the detail at the extremes of the tonal range. My next step would be to come up to the film compression tool. Here you have the ability to fine tune your highlights, allowing you to soften, but not restore any clipping that might have occurred. The impact parameter allows you to manipulate the degree of compression, the higher the value here, the more the highlights are pushed towards the midtones, creating a flatter looking image. The white point parameter defines the film clipping threshold. The lower the white point is, the sooner clipping will occur in the highlights. This will increase the contrast of the image. The higher the white point is, the later clipping will appear in the highlights, which creates a more flat and grayed out appearance in the bright part of your image. This is a terrific tool to soften off blown out highlights. The tonal range parameter affects how much compression is done throughout the entire image. A lower value here will create more contrast in your image, whereas a higher value will create a flatter looking image. The color density parameter affects the level of saturation in your highlights. A lower value here creates less saturated highlights and a higher value will create more saturated highlights. The next tool to be used would be the color head. Here you have the ability to adjust your yellow, blue, magenta, green and cyan red sliders to manipulate the colors within the image. By checking the gang option, you're able to manipulate all three of the above sliders simultaneously. Below this, you have the ability to control the tone of the shadows, midtones and highlights. To me, this is a fantastic tool that can be used to create unique looks within your image by manipulating how warm or cool various parts of the image are. The preserve exposure parameter, when set to 100, allows you to ensure that there are no changes in exposure after manipulating the color head tool. The impact parameter allows you to adjust the strength of the settings within the color head tool. The next tool to use would be film grain. The first thing that I want to adjust would be the film type. A negative film type will give you more pronounced grain, whereas a positive film type will produce a softer grain. I'd recommend keeping your mode set to analog for a higher quality grain simulation. You're also able to adjust the size and the amount of your grain. You're able to fine tune this even further by manipulating how much grain appears in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. The chroma parameter will determine how saturated your grain is. You can only really notice this when pushing it to the extreme case. The film resolution parameter is very useful as it allows you to keep a high resolution image even after having added the grain. Next up is the halation tool, which is very useful in giving your image that characteristic red orange halo around bright light sources. It is also likely to produce a red glare around your midtones, particularly affecting the skin tones. I will be exaggerating my examples in this tool to give you a clearer demonstration of how the parameters alter the effects. Halation and bloom work well together, so I would recommend enabling the bloom tool at this point. Let's start off with local diffusion. This defines how far the light of the halo spread, and the global diffusion controls a secondary glare produced by scattered light. We'll leave the local diffusion high here to emphasize the rest of the effects for demonstration purposes. The source limiter defines the minimum light source that's able to produce halation. The value of zero means that even weak sources of light are able to produce halation. And by increasing this value, you can cut the effect produced by low intensity lights. The background gain parameter sets the range of the background tones on which halation becomes visible. Default value allows halation to appear on most backgrounds. Decreasing this value eliminates the effect over the light of tones. The smoothness parameter affects the amount of detail retained in the areas with halation. A value of 100 here will give you the most detail in your halos. Amplify will make your halation more pronounced. Hue will affect the color of your halation within the realm of cool reds and warm yellows. Blue compensation will allow you to counterbalance a dampened halo on a cool background. Impact can be thought of as opacity and allows you to define how pronounced your overall effect will be. 
mask mode allows you to mask out everything other than the effect. Bloom adds a glow around the light sources in an image. I'll start here by exaggerating the amplifier parameter for the sake of the example. Amplifier effectively controls the strength of the bloom effect. The highlights parameter determines the brightness threshold for bloom to appear. It can be considered the sensitivity of the effect. Source limiter cuts off the unwanted blooming from the lower end of the tonal range defined by the highlight settings. Increasing the value of the details parameter will spread the effect out more across the frame, whereas keeping this value low will keep the effect more localized. Diffusion can be thought of the spread of the bloom effect. The larger the value, the larger the glow. Save lights acts as a way to preserve highlights from clipping that might be introduced by the bloom effect. With the saturation parameter, you're able to desaturate the bloom effect. Impact can be thought of as opacity and allows you to define how pronounced your overall effect will be. Mask mode allows you to mask out everything other than the effect. The vignette tool is pretty standard. You can adjust the exposure, size, feather, aspect ratio, and center of the vignette using the sliders here. The film breath tool works to counter any accidental change in exposure, contrast, and color from frame to frame as the film moves. The period slider allows you to adjust how many frames are being considered when analyzing these changes. With a higher value, the fluctuations will be smoother. The exposure, tonal contrast, and color sliders affect the amplitude of the fluctuations. With lower values, the variations of the corresponding parameters will be more subtle. Impact adjusts the overall effect. Gate weave simulates the mechanical swinging of a film strip while it's being pulled through a frame window in a film camera, projector, or video coding device. The period parameter determines the number of frames within which the frame shift occurs. The larger the value here, the more amplified the bumps during playback are. The translation parameters specifies an amplitude of random shifts in a frame. The rotation parameter sets the maximum angle of those random frame rotations. The auto zoom option automatically zooms into an image to compensate frame shift. This is gonna crop any black gaps left around your frame when the transformation occurs. There are a couple of useful tools within the monitor section such as false color and a clipping indicator. The output slider determines the overall impact that the Dehancer plugin has on your footage. The LUT generator tool allows you to generate LUTs based off of your settings created within Dehancer. This can help speed up your color grading process. Like I mentioned before, I highly recommend checking out this software. I think it's a great tool for filmmakers who are looking for a simple and time efficient way to get a very high end final color grade done on their footage. Make sure to use my promo code Reno to get a 10% discount on the software at checkout. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos that can help you become a better filmmaker. Thanks for watching.